You need a strong east wind to blow out your preconceived ideas. You need a strong east wind to blow out your religion. You need a strong east wind to blow out the doctrine of the scribes and Pharisees, which still possess your soul because you've not allowed the Holy Ghost to move in you and set you free. A ministry with a vision. A ministry on the move. A ministry established by our faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Think what God wants to do in his people is make his supernatural Holy Ghost fire and power clear to our sight, clear to our mind, so that there is no doubt in our spiritual creation who God is. Bible for Christ Love International Ministry, a ministry with a vision built on a plan. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I am ready for a powerful move of God tonight. I am ready to praise him and lift his name on high. Amen. I'm going to go ahead and have uh, my husband, Abel, come and open up in prayer. I don't know about you. But I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing. I feel the power of the anointing. Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel it? Do you feel the fire shut up in your bones? Do you feel it? I don't know about you. It's a mystery. It's freedom. Run, jump, cry. I don't care. Let the liberty, let the power of the Holy Ghost move. This night. Don't be embarrassed. Your family, your revival for Christ Club. Holy Ghost, have your way. Holy Ghost, breathe. Oh, let the fire. We pour altars in the fire. God consume us. Let your spirit, let your anointed God. Oh! <laughs> Have your way, God. Have your way, God. Let thy will be done tonight, Father, by your spirit, by your anointing, God. Oh, we yield, God. We yield at your presence. God, we yield, God. Oh, at your majesty, can we yield, God. You are the King of kings and Lord of all. Father, we yield. Here we surrender, God. Have your way, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, let the sweet, sweet spirits all dwell in this place, God. Ah, let the sweet honey drip from your throne room, God. Let the honey drip, God. Every tabernacle, God, this night, God. And let your freedom, God. Let your freedom, God, have your way. He no love so that I was Me lo so in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Ghost. All right, before we start with the praise, they're going to come up and start praising the Lord. But i got to tell you something. I, can, I want all of us to do this together. Chief Apostle told me to do this, and I said, yes, sir, I will do it. The I want everybody to repeat after me. I want you to say, God is 
is good. God is great. And God is for RFC. Now, if you believe it, get on your feet and praise the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Hallelujah. Come on now. If you feel the fire of God today, I need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. We need you to shout, 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 shout. There's a revival that's burning in me. His word is alive and the truth will set you free. A river of fire is about to be released. Cause there's a revival that's burning in me. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire. Somebody shout, there's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my soul. There's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire in my soul. I got it later. I got Fire in the 
of the king shining in me we want the fire 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 we want the we want the we want the we 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 want the fire we want the fire we want the fire we want the fire in my hands fire in my hands
just needs to walk through the furnace today. Whatever the day did to you, huh? whatever you went through out this week, huh? whatever burdens you had on you today, huh? God wants you to walk. Huh? God wants you to run. Run to the furnace. Run. Run. Huh? It's not going like how you thought. Huh? It's not going how you thought it was. Huh? But that's okay, because we're going to get burned. We're going to flow in the Holy Ghost. We're going to run. We're going to run. We're going to dance. Turn up the radio. Turn it up. Turn. Turn on the radio. Light up. as if the fire wants to continue to burn. Woo! And I don't know about you, but the brilliance, uh, the bru I can feel the brilliance of the fire. The flame is burning bright. Uh, it's okay to let the flame burn bright. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, it's okay to let the flame burn bright. Uh, it's okay to let the flame... Right now, uh, let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Go, go, go. Push past. Uh, push past. Uh, and let the fire burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Roko Rosetai, Rosea, it's okay to let the fire burn you. There it is. There it is. There it lift up your praise to the Lord. Woo! Woo! Whoa! Do you need music to praise? Because I don't. I don't need music to praise. I will burn. I will run with or without music. It's okay, we're about to continue. 
But God just wants to see if you'll just stay in the fire just a little bit. If you'll stay in the flame just a little bit. Let it burn. There it is, Shannon. There it is, Shannon. You're burning. You're burning. You're burning. Let it loose. Let it loose. There it is. Oh, Suzanne, it's all over you. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Come on right now. Come on right now, fire. Come on right now. There it is. There it is. There it is. Go ahead. Marissa, there it is. There it is. It's all over you. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. There it is right there. The fire. The fire. The fire. Amelia, go ahead. Go ahead. Go. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Leave it all behind. Lift it up to the Lord. Rocco Rossi. Rocco Ro. Rosso. Rocco Rossi. Oh, Rocco Rossi. Rocco Rossi. Rocco Rossi. trying to go on but I feel the spirit of God so heavily right now Whoa. fire fire Whoa. Oh. oh God oh just throw me in the fire throw me in the fire Lord Throw me in the fire. It's my desire to go into the fire. Yeah. Turn up the radio. Turn on the radio. Light up. Y'all got it, y'all got it. I wanna glow, I wanna glow. One more time. Turn up the radio. Turn on, turn up the radio. Light it up, go, go, go. Go, go, go. Glow, glow, glow. I want to glow in the dark. 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 Somebody glow. Somebody glow. Somebody glow. Somebody glow. Somebody glow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, glow, glow, glow. Fire in the hands, fire in the feet, fire in the church, fire in the set, fire in the hands. Fire in the feet, fire in the church, fire in the sea. Fire in the hands, fire in the feet, fire in the church, fire in the sea. Fire in the hands. Fire is going. Turn it up seven times. Turn it up seven times. Burn in me. Burn in me. Burn in me. It's a holy fire. It's a holy fire. Don't worry about who's watching. Don't worry about who's watching. Just go. Get loose. Get loose. Get loose. Break loose. Break loose. 
Franco, 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 the people of God today. I see it over Regina right now. It's burning her. It's burning you. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Burn, 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 burn. Go, 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 go. today strip it all away today let it burn the fire turn it up he's turning it up seven times he's waited for you to go into the fiery furnace he's ready for you to be consumed because he is a consuming fire 
He's a consuming fire. Oh, Roko Rossi. There it is. Just start speaking in tongues right now. You're about to be broken today. Just start speaking in tongues. You hold the power of life or death in your tongues. Will you speak life today? The only way to speak life is Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Roye na 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 mo. Roko na 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 mo se. Rose na na ya. Roko rosa ro. Ro o o ro ho. Rosi e. There it is. There it is. It's stirring up in you. It's stirring up in the room. It's stirring up in the room. There it is. God is preparing his people uh, to go into a next, uh, a new type of level, uh, a new type of level. Uh, he's preparing you uh, to get into that X, uh, but you have to use this time uh, to get prepared. Uh, prepare right now. Let him prepare you right now. He's getting ready to advance you into something new. Are you ready? Pressing you, he's pressing you, he's pressing you, he's pressing you, he's shaking you, he's shaking you, he's shaking you. There's something new. He's shaking you, he's shaking you, he's shaking you. He's doing something, something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. He's birthing something new. He's birthing something. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. I gotta let it out. I gotta let it out today. I gotta let it out today. Tasha Willis. Tasha Willis, you gotta let it out today. You gotta let it out today. He's been burning the fire inside of you. You gotta let it out. Go, let it out. Let it burn, consume you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are new. It's all over you. It's all over you, brother. He's working in you. He's birthing you. A new, a new, a fresh, a fresh. Just let it out. Just let it out. Just let it out. out. Let it out. out. Let it out. out. Let it out. out. Yeah. Fire in my hands. Fire in my feet. Yes, he did. He said it's like fire. He said it's like fire. Shut up in your mouth. It was shut up in your mouth. Go ahead. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my mouth. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my mouth. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my mouth. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up in my mouth. 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 Shut up, shut up, shut up in my mouth. Father, I praise you. 
I believe we're getting ready to enter even a different, a different way of praising the Lord. It is a there is an anointing here, and the power of God is here. There is prophecy all over you. Even as you sing and as you praise the Lord, and even as a team, when you praise the Lord, and there's prophecy coming out to the people, the fire of God is here. The fire of God is here. Oh, Yandalabasi, it is His fire. Oh, yeah. I have fire in the feet, fire in the chest. Fire in the sea, fire in my head, fire in my feet, fire in the chest, fire in the sea, fire in my head, fire in my feet. Oh yes, Lord, fire in the chest, oh we praise you, fire in my head, fire in my feet, fire in the chest, fire in the sea, fire in my head, fire in my feet, fire in the chest. Fire in the sh Oh yeah! Fire in my head. Oh God, we're fire praising you! Feet. Let that fire, fire move! Dirt. Oh yeah! Fire in my head, fire in my feet, fire in the church, fire in the street, fire in my head, fire in my feet, give him praise! Fire in the yeah. Fire in my head, fire in my feet, fire in the church. Fire in the street, yeah, yeah, yeah. fire in my head, fire, 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 yes, Lord. fire, 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 yeah. oh yes, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we give you all the glory, and all the praise belongs to you, Lord, oh, let the Spirit of the Lord have his way. Aren't you thankful that you can walk into a church? where the Spirit of the Lord can move however it wants to move. Oh, if you came in with a need, if you came in with a hurt, if you came in hungry, all you have to do is lift up your hands. All you have to do is yield to Him. He is the great I Am. And his presence is here. His anointing is here. His fire is here. Oh, Yandala Mahandara Basai. Oh, God, we praise you. Oh, God, all day we waited to come into the house of the Lord and give you the highest praise and lift up our hands to you. Father, you alone are worthy. You alone deserve to be praised. You alone, God. How many of you feel that presence? How many of you feel that fire? How many of you feel the hand of the Lord in this place? Oh, Hallelujah, God, we praise you. Father, we give you all the glory. Oh, there's nothing like his presence. There's nothing like coming into the house of the Lord and just yielding to him and giving him praise. Oh, his presence is so powerful and it's so beautiful. Oh, we reverence you. Let's just reverence him just one moment. So many times we try to rush through things. But Father, right now, in this moment, Father, we stop everything to reverence you, to thank you for your presence, to thank you for your anointing, to thank you, God, for moving and showing us, Lord, and demonstrating to us just how much you're here. His presence, his anointing, his train is filling the temple. Oh, 
Father, we thank you and we praise you. Oh, thank you, Father. We just praise him. I just can't get enough of his presence. His power and his glory is here. Amen. And you got a touch of what God has for you. Amen. Don't you ever forget that. You take that with you. Amen. At this moment, I'm going to go ahead and bring up. They're going to do a song which I think is very fitting. Is it Holy Fire? Winds of Glory are going to come up here. And they're going to do Holy Fire. burning inside of me your grace it is the power that's bringing me to my knees and every time I see I can see Jesus
too, but I am ready for the Word of God tonight. I am ready to hear the voice of God. I'm ready to receive of what the Spirit of God would speak through His chosen vessel tonight. So tonight, it is with great honor and great privilege that I get to introduce the vessel, the man of God that is going to be bringing forth God's holy and precious word. And the reason, one of the reasons why I say it's a great honor and a privilege, because he truly considers God's word in this opportunity a precious, precious opportunity, a precious responsibility and assignment. This gentleman, he is a miracle. He is a miracle in more ways than one. Amen. To come through the things he came through. And then to come out of the life that this world tried to destroy him with. And then how the enemy has tried to take him out because he knows that he has a great calling upon his life. And so it is with honor and privilege tonight that I introduce minister's candidate, a man of God, an anointed prophet of God, John Crandall. You ought to be giving the Lord a hand clap. I'm just a man, right? I'm so humbled. I don't take this lightly. You know, I grew up with a father that broke my fingers so that I couldn't catch a baseball because I come home from baseball practice late. Who broke my ribs who called me awful names, who'd throw me across the room by my hair and kick me in the face. He bruised me from head to toe. He would beat on me. I watched him beat my mother. I got into drugs and alcohol. And my wife will tell you now, when they try to find a vein in me, they can't. They have to stick me four, five, seven, ten times. And I never complained because I did it to myself as a junkie. I about drank myself to death. I probably had 200 fist fights a year for 10 years. I've had guns put in my face. People trying to kill me. I wrecked motorcycles at 100 miles an hour and lived through it. Now I fought cancer for about 20 years. And I don't complain about it. And I'll tell you why. i tell you this one thing. Because to overcome that, to never complain, no matter what your situation in this life, to have everything stacked against you, to have the devil try to destroy you at every turn, and to come out of it on the other side. You need to know something. I'm serving notice to the devil. All you've done is thrown me in a fire, and out comes a weapon. I'm a weapon, devil. He messed up. You picked the wrong guy. You might have destroyed others, but you brought me out. Determined. You didn't know what you were dealing with because God filled me with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And now, honey, when I get up in the morning and I start talking in tongues, the devil has to be confused. He has to be saying to himself, why does this guy keep coming at me? I don't do it for me. I do it for the lost and dying world out there. Because I was called even from birth. Because you can't take away my calling no matter what you do to this vessel. No matter what you do to this body. Regardless of the things I've been through, gone through, or will go through. He can't defeat me, Mario. He can't. Even unto my death, where is the sting of my death? People worry about how do I get into heaven. I worry about how do I save souls, and that will get me into heaven. If I follow God every day, how can I be in His Spirit and miss it? How can I be in His Word and miss it? See, I don't have to worry about the things and the stuff of this world if I do and say and believe and live live what I preach live what I talk to people about live it 
You have to live it. I've known people that can preach, honey, but they didn't live it. I've known people that could sing, but they didn't live it. If you ain't living it, hit the door. It's a new day. It's a new day in RFC. There's a greater understanding coming. It's the hope of glory. There's a greater praise coming. And there's going to be a greater commitment required. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that commitment today. Like Chief Apostle says, it might make you mad, but you'll get glad again. And if you don't get glad again, you get spewed. Well, while I got you on your feet, I'm going to open in prayer. Father, thank You so much for this wonderful honor, for this privilege, this priceless privilege to speak Your Word. To have You trust me with Your flock, Father. The saints of God. God, I'm honored by it. I'm not worthy of it. But I sure thank You for it. God, prepare their hearts, prepare their minds, prepare their souls. God, allow them to receive whatever it is that You want for them. Not what I say, but what You want, Father. Not my words, Father, but Your understanding and Your words, Father. God, I yield right now to the Holy Ghost that the people may be fed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I'll settle down for just a minute so you guys can... You guys can have a seat now. I'm sorry I got, got introduced way too well there. I mean, what an honor it is to be in a membership in a fold like this, let alone being able to minister to you people. I, I hold all of you in very high regard because the worst of us is better than the best of them. Amen? That ain't got nothing to do with my message. Here we go. Before I get started, though, you know, as always, we're taught to do three things around here. And one is, before we get started doing anything, we always give honor to our leadership. This leadership is, is, is led us by the Word and by the Spirit and through prayer. They put everything in prayer. They bathe it in prayer. And Chief Apostle has brought us things and built this ministry and for 50 years has told the truth. That's why there's only 50 people in the room, because he told the truth. We could fill the churches up the way he preaches if he just soften it up a little bit. Right? I mean, just soften it up a little bit. No, that's compromise, and we don't do it here. If you're looking for compromise, you've looked to the wrong place. So we always give honor to the leadership, and we always give honor to God. We do that when we open in prayer, and that's the third thing we do. MIT's around here, we know. In MCs, we know that we don't do anything without opening in prayer. You, sh you shouldn't get up and start your day without opening in prayer. You shouldn't decide where you're going to go eat without opening in prayer. What happens if, what happens if there's somebody dangerous going to be at the restaurant you think you want to go to for pancakes at 10 o'clock at night? You need to know where you're at. This is a, di a dying and dangerous world. And so we need to know where we're at at all times. Who watched the flame? On Monday night. <laughs> okay, well, welcome to 2024. And one of the things that Chief said at the end of the discussion that he was when he was having a discussion with Apostle Jennifer is, and uh, I want to quote this: "We are going to feed commitment over talent." Now, as a prophet, I'm always seeking direction from the Lord. I want to hear the Lord's voice and direction. Well, all I had to do was watch the program and pay attention to the direction. That's the direction for 2024. For those of you who don't know, it's going to be commitment. So wherever you're at in the Lord, whatever you think you've done, it hadn't been enough. Or we wouldn't be talking about commitment. We'd be talking about something else. There's a reason that God wants to talk about commitment. This ministry was born out of a vision. On God's palm. Amen. It was established when when Apostle Vanover was released by Romans. And, and I'm and I'm, like I say, I, this is a little calmer than I normally am, so just bear with me. Romans 12 and 11. 
Be ye not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. Now, I found a couple interesting things there. Slothful in business. Well, whose business are we not slothful about? Because I rose to the top 2% of a network marketing company in five and a half months, man. They thought I was on my way. And I got a picture of a friend of mine who uh, I was in that business with who was coming back from Dubai. And he's worth about $10 million now. And when I started MITs, they told me, or I say they, the chief apostle told me, he said, you can't be a network marketer and be, and be a minister's candidate, a minister in training. You can't do it because there's a conflict of interest there. And, man, I toiled, and I burned, and I sweated. And I, I was like, I don't know if I can give that up because I'm going to be rich. And I went to Sandra, you know, back back there at that table she's sitting at, and I was like, I just don't know. How am I going to leave that money behind? I how am I going to make a living? What am I going to do? What about me? 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 What You hearing that? What about me? Me! And forgot all about you people. I wasn't called to be rich. I wasn't called to be famous. I wasn't called to be a network marketer. I was called to preach and teach and to prophesy and to lay hands on the sick and see them recovered, to give sight to the blind, the blind in spirit, the blind, so that they can see, so that scales fall from their eyes, so that they can be baptized with the Holy Ghost, so that they too can manifest the image and nature of a living God, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God I serve, the God I want to tell you about that brought me out of all those things, of all that abuse, of all those drugs, of all that alcohol, of all this cancer, of all these things that don't make a big difference in my life. Let me tell you what does. Him and Him alone. He's what matters. My wallet doesn't matter. I can get caught up in all the things of this world and I'm dead in 20 years. In 20 minutes. I can get in the car and have a stroke. Have a wreck. Have a dog attack me and kill me. I mean, people die every day. You ain't guaranteed another day. You better be in right standing with God. You better get righteous. You better learn to overcome your flesh. You better learn how to deal in His anointing. We're going back to the roar so He can revelate and expose Himself to you so you know where He wants you to be every day. So you know the direction you're supposed to be going. And the direction you're supposed to be going is with more commitment, more dedication, to be more sold out, to be all that God has called you to be. You see, why do we have to preach that? Apostle Vanover has been preaching that since I got here 30 years ago. But now he has to reiterate it. We're going to talk about commitment, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever heard him say anything else? We want you to be all that God has called you to be. And, uh, quote, <coughs> this is what we believe. Some of you newer folks, this is what we believe. And if you don't believe that, then we'll pray about it. And you can take it to the leadership at any time and they'll answer questions. And if it happened to have been wrong, I know that they'll change it. All right? I've never seen anything wrong, but if, if, if it happens to be. It says here, being a ministry that provides spiritual opportunity to those believers who feel God has selected them to perform the function to which they were called in the body of Christ. Well, let me tell you something. When something's functioning, it's working. When my car is functioning properly, it takes me down the road. Look at my car function. When my car ain't functioning, I'm like, not going anywhere. God gave you a function. God gave you a purpose. He wants you hitting on all cylinders, right? Well, you got to put the right fuel in you. You need His Word. You need His Spirit. You need those things in equal measure. That's how you get down the road. So here, going back to Romans 12 and 11. 
It says, be not slothful in business, but fervent in spirit. Now, I'm not a big Webster's guy, you know, but I thought, I want to look up fervent because that that's the ministry that, that Apostle was given. When he was released to begin Revival for Christ Club, this was the scripture that they gave him. This, they said, this will, this will be what propels your ministry, right? To be fervent in spirit. Webster's defines fervent in spirit as zealous, earnest, and very hot. Very hot? You mean like if I was not lukewarm, you would spew me from your mouth? And then I got to look it a little further. So I thought, I'm going to go look at spew. Do y'all know where the spew is? That's Revelation 3.16. Everybody knows what John 3.16 is. Uh, yeah, Jesus, he come to save the world and all that. And uh, gee willikers, we're all going to have a big party and uh, you know, wine and crackers. And uh, Jesus loves you. And no matter what you do, you're saved. But Revelation 3.16, ha ha, ha ha. Not the beginning of the New Testament church, but the end of the New Testament church. And the ending of the thing is greater than the beginning of the thing. So, is it a mistake that God put it in Revelation 3.16? I'm just wondering. I, sometimes I think, oh, you know, there's got to be a coincidence in here somewhere. I haven't found one, but surely there is. So, Revelation 3.16 is be, you, be, be hot or He'll spew you from your mouth from his mouth. I just find that interesting. All right, well, let's start in the Word. Psalm 1. And this is kind of halfway born out of my own arrogance. I, I want to tell on myself, I, I went to my wife and I said that I get to, I get to preach on Wednesday and uh, I never get to preach out of the Psalms because they're all warm and fuzzy and pastor-like. and You know, the Psalms are so soft and they just make you feel good and they're songs about glory and praise and they just make you feel warm and fuzzy on the inside and the Lord's like really John let's go look at the first one <laughs> boy I, I love the really John's <laughs> you know they come to me every now and then when I'm in the spirit I want to read it in the amplified King James version <clears throat> and it says blessed Happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans, and their purposes, nor stands, glory to God, submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to rest and relax where the scornful and the mockers gather. Boy, that's warm and fuzzy now, ain't it? He said, first of all, you need to quit listening to them knuckleheads that tell you you spend too much time down there at that church. They're scorners. They're mockers. They're sinners. Listen, I don't go to a poor person and ask them how to be rich. So when I apply that knowledge to this, I'm not going to a person who's poor in spirit and asking them how to be rich. That's why we go to the leadership. That's why we get in wise counsel. We ask people that know. We ask people that are living it. You can talk about it. Be about it. If you ain't living it, I don't want to hear from you. You need to live it. It needs to be part of your life. It needs to be who you are, not what you do. It needs to be more than just words on a page. It needs to be alive in your heart. Amen. It says submissive and inactive. Again, back to purpose. Back to function. When you're functioning, you are not inactive. You are moving. You're moving toward a goal. And that goal is to get souls saved. That goal is to Im improve your word and spirit, if you will, to, to, to grow in His Word and grow in His Spirit and to grow in ministry, to grow, to grow, to grow. It's so important that we're not stagnant, that we don't just sit in one spot. So that was my, that was my psalm that I got to read. 
all warm and fuzzy. They said, just sit on your backside and praise the Lord. Show up on Sunday and everything will be fine. But if we're talking about commitment, it says not to be submissive and inactive. All right, let's go to Luke. Second chapter. And this is going to be the, the bulk of the message, if you will. We're going to start in the 40th verse. King James Version. And it says, And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. We're talking about Jesus Christ here. Now, the, 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 the verses preceding this were the birth of Jesus. And here, from 40 to 52, it talks about the adolescence of Jesus. He's 12 years old. Okay, it's the only reference to his adolescence. Until he picks up, until he picks up his ministry later on, there's no other mention of him in that part of his life. Okay, and it says, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as the, and when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him amongst their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Now let's unpack some of this. The child grew waxen and strong. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of Passover. There was a big party in Jerusalem every year. And so they go to this feast. And it says, and when they had fulfilled the days, they returned. But Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. Now I want to stop right there real quick. So, they went, they went to the feast. They went to church. They showed up on Sunday. They showed up on Wednesday. They did all them things they were supposed to do. But as soon as they fulfilled their obligation, as soon as they had fulfilled what they were supposed to do, what did they do? They went packing. They took off. But they forgot something. Well, what did they forget? You are Jesus' mother and father. The angel then come to you and said, this boy is the savior of everybody. And you forgot him? You got to be out of your mind. Where was jo Joseph? Wasn't like, uh, you know what, Mary? Maybe we should find Jesus before we smash out of here. I mean, ain't that like us, though? I mean, I, I, I want to point fingers at them because I don't like pointing fingers at me. But sometimes I get in here, man, and I, I think, you know, I just got to do this, and then I can go home and rest. Well, I just got to get that done, and then I can go home and relax. Well, that ain't what Psalm said I could do. The warm and fuzzy one, anyway. See, you don't get to rest. You don't get to relax. You don't get to leave Jesus behind. You don't get to fulfill your obligation and then go about your business. Turns out you need to be a little more dedicated, a little more committed, a little more sold out, and you don't have to be 25 years old. How old was Jesus? He was 12 years old. And he wasn't just sitting around. He was teaching. And people were astonished. 
Now, if the ending of the thing is greater than the beginning of a thing, we ought to have some 10-year-olds around here ready to rock and roll. I guess what I'm trying to say, Jilly, is you don't have an excuse. If you want to manifest the image and nature of Christ, if you want to be something for God, then you need to do what Jesus did and you need to be teaching in the synagogue. You need, to, But to do that, you have to wax in knowledge. You have to be filled with wisdom and the grace of God must be upon you. Right? That's what you have to do first. You have to get wisdom. Well, you can get wisdom from leadership. The people that have been through it. Wisdom only comes with time and age. But it can be handed down if you apply it. Please don't touch the fire. It's going to burn you. That's wisdom. And if you're a smart kid, you go, okay. Now you have that wisdom. That fire will burn me. So 50 years down the road, you can live and learn from the wisdom. If you only will. And that's why we have young people who have and who are doing well around here. When they had fulfilled the days. They fulfilled the days. We're all done here. Let's hit the road, guys. Pack it up. Let's go. Just leave Jesus behind. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem. Turns out that they were going about life on their own terms. They were doing what they wanted to do. Huh. You ever done that? But they, supposing him to have been in their company. Oh, here we go. Lord, I want you to bless what I'm doing. Not what you called. Lord, I want you to bless this thing. I could, sh listen. If I went and I made that $10 million, I would give it all to you. I would build a temple in your honor. <laughs> we're, we're, I mean, I, I may or may not be in church today. I don't know. I don't know what would happen. But I know I couldn't, without the sacrifice, be the man that I am. See, it takes the sacrifice. It takes the commitment. It takes the dedication. Amen? All right. And then they found him not. They turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Why the doctors? What? You mean there weren't any scribes or Pharisees or men and women or religion there to hear him? They didn't want to hear what this kid had to say. He must not have anything good to say. Don't expect the men and women of religion to listen to you. They're not going to be there. But the people that will be there, are the people that want to bring healing. That have taken an oath to bring healing. They want to listen to you. They want, they want to hear what you have to say if it's Jesus coming out of you. He said in the mix of the people who are going to bring healing to others. Who aren't about themselves. They were the ones. He said both, and it says both hearing them and asking them questions. He said, why would he hear them and ask them questions? Well, it could be that he wanted to hear why they believed what they did. Why is it that you believe what you do? He might have said any kind of question to them. Well, why is it that you believe that you should only speak in tongues? Why is it you believe that women should be silent in the church? Why is it that you believe? Why is it you, I mean, and then teach them. And it says after that, and they all heard him. And they were astonished at his understanding and answers. So he asked them questions, but then he gave them the answers. So if you're following that, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us, or uh, thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Well, I had these plans, and I had these ideas, and I had this agenda, and I had this, this thing going on in my life, and, and I just knew you'd bless it, God. I just knew it was you. And now you found yourself without him. And then you go to him and say, I just don't understand, Lord. Well, he's about to give you some understanding. You're about to get some understanding. They wrote it in red letters for dummies like me. Yeah, it's funny, but it ain't. And he said unto them, how is it that ye sought me? See, I don't say like, how is it that ye sought me? I think Jesus goes, how is it that ye sought me? Like, wait a minute, you were looking for me? You were looking for the Son of God. 
wondering where he was, and it took you three days to come to my father's house? It took you that long to make a decision? Oh, boy. Let's look back just a little bit. See, we had ideas about the way things were supposed to go in our lives. And we left Jesus behind. And we left His plan behind. And we left the Son of God behind, knowing full well who He was and where He was taking us. We had our own ideas and our own agendas. But now He wants to know, how is it that you sought Me? You didn't. Because if you had sought Him, you would have known He'd be about His Father's business. That's what he's saying here. And they understood not the saying which he spake to them. Hmm. I just don't understand, Lord. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept these sayings in her heart. At least she put it in her heart. You see, when we go to the council of the ungodly, they put things in our heart. And they plant seeds. And they get in the way of our purpose and our calling in our direction. You need to be careful the people you listen to. In this new season, we're not going to listen to people that talk bad about this ministry. We're not going to listen to people that talk bad about leadership that bathe things in prayer. We're not going to listen to people that talk bad about the Word of God. We're not going to listen to people that aren't dedicated like me. If you ain't dedicated, if you ain't sold out, you ain't got nothing to say to me because I am. Because Honey, I got things to do for the kingdom of God. If it takes my last breath, if it takes my last dollar, if it takes my family, if it takes everything from me, you hear me. Hear me now. I don't care what the devil throws at me. I don't care what this world throws at me. I don't care what family and friends say to me. I'm on a determined purpose, and it's to bring His Word. It's to bring His Spirit. It's to manifest the image and nature of a living God so that others can see it. Because when I manifest His image and nature, other people are saved by it. The world says, here, hold my beer. I say, here, hold my sin. I'll be back. No, I won't. I'm not going back. I don't want to go back. See, I don't have to work on any of those things that I've put behind me because I was a child, and when I did those childish things, I was a child. But now, I'm an anointed vessel of God. And devil, I serve notice. I'm coming for you, buddy. I'm coming for the souls that you think you've stolen. You haven't won because I'm still here, buddy. And when I'm gone, my grandchildren are coming for you. And my children are coming for you. Mario is coming for you. They messed up when they thought they had you, Darian. They messed up. You tell them when things come against you. Me satai. You love Akoya that I must see. Deliverance! Delivered! Midakai! You never have to go back. I deliver thee, saith the Lord thy God. Meshakata, I deliver this mind. I deliver this heart. Imashaka, I breathe life into these lungs. The life of the Spirit of God. Mashakata, I speak, I prophesy in the Kamakata sea, and I proclaim victory. Get your hands off my brother. Take your hands off my brother. He's bought and paid for with a price, the price of Jesus' blood, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. When you get the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you're filled with power. Nobody can take the power from you. Nothing in this world can take the power you've been endued with. The power that you've been endued with. The power. I speak power. 
Power to come out of this mind. Power to come out of this mouth. I speak fire. And fire. I proclaim fire. And power. Over my brother. He's coming for you, devil. We serve notice. He's coming for you. Woo! Man, God is good. It isn't every ministry out there that's like this. It isn't every ministry where we have praise like this, where we have preachers like the preachers that we sit under. But not just preachers, ministers. There's a difference between preachers and ministers. And in these end times, you're going to need to know the difference. We need to know the difference, don't we, D? Because we've heard people that can sing. We've seen people that can play. We've seen people that can twirl the flags faster than ye all. Then it ain't no good without anointing. And you got to be in righteousness to get anointing. You can't just get anointing through osmosis. You get anointing through His Word and through His Spirit, through prayer, through dedication. Come up here, Nada Joe. God, I speak a new dedication to this vessel. A dedication. God says, make a decision. Make a decision to step into the fire. And I, the Lord thy God, will anoint thee. But you have to stop being lukewarm. Daughter, your soul is in danger if you stay lukewarm. I tell you this, as a prophet of God, I tell you now, step into the fire. Step into the fire. God says, be ye hot or be ye cold. But I speak hot, hot, hot. We proclaim hot. Agree with me on my sister. My sister who has heard in her heart. God, you can heal it. I proclaim healing over this heart. Fire, 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 fire purifies even the finest of gold. Fire purifies. Either I'm a shock no no na Fire! Brother Calvin, this doesn't sound like the kind of thing that a man speaks to a man, but I tell you, God gave me a word for you. And that word is beautiful. That word is beautiful. The Lord spoke to me about you several, several days ago. And he said, I put in you one of the most beautiful hearts. I put in you a love for people and a humility. Beautiful. Beautiful. He just keeps repeating it to me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Does everyone see that? Beautiful. Hello.
Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I'm International Evangelist and Administrative Vice President of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to help us take a revival around the world to our friends in Honduras, Mexico, Singapore, and Malaysia, this is how you can do it. First off, you can send your checks or money orders to 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. You can also call in with credit card at 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can do it through the Cash App. That's money sign RFC ROAR. That's money sign RFC ROAR. Thanks in advance for helping us take the flame around the world. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God.